Hello, welcome to uh, Knowledge 7, Westward Expansion. Today we're on Lesson 2, where we're going to be talking about Mr. Fulton's journey. Now, before we talk about um, Mr. Fulton's journey, let's review again what we talked about in our last Read Aloud. In our last Read Aloud, we just talked about the Morgan family heading out west, and they headed out west on a popular kind of road that they called it. It wasn't like a road we see outside in our time, but it was a way they traveled back then, and they traveled on the Oregon Trail, and it started here in Independence, Missouri, and headed out west this way. And so that's the trail that the Morgan family headed out on. Um, again, let's review our westward expansion vocab word. I'll say the word. You repeat it after me. Sites. What does that word sites mean? Now, after today's read aloud, you should be able to identify what the main topic of Mr. Fulton's journey is. Or main topic, remember, means what's one sentence you could say that would... Um, that this whole read aloud would be about. Again, remember, there needs all the details need to support that or say, yep, that's the main idea. And then also show an understanding of the word voyage. What's happening in this picture? As she stepped from the deck onto the boat, the lady in the pink dress held a matching pink parcel or umbrella above her head. It was a sunny August day in 1807 in New York City, and she wanted to protect her delicate skin from the sunlight. She smiled at one of the boat's owners. Mr. Fulton, she said, I hope your boat will do everything you have built her to do. Wait, what do you think Mr. Fulton's boat was built to do? What's the setting of this story? The lady's husband shook Mr. Fulton's hand and said, It will be a great day if you succeed, Miss Fulton. A great day indeed. Then the couple walked forward to join the other ladies and gentlemen already on board. The, men, the man whom they had greeted, Robert Fulton, wore a confident smile, but inside he was terribly nervous. He thought to himself, If all goes well today, I will be rich, and people all over the world will know my name. If I fail, I will lose a great deal of money and be laughed at as a dreamer and a fool. That must not happen. Fulton felt a hand on his shoulder and turned to find his business partner, Robert Livingston, standing at his side. Robert Livingston was wealthy, an important man. He had worked for the government both in the United States and in Europe. Many years ago in 1801, while Fulton was in Europe doing business, he met Livingston at a restaurant in Paris. Fulton told Livingston, what I am working on right now will forever change the way people travel and the way in which everyone does business. What do you think Mr. Fulton had been working on back then? Livingston's eyes lit up with interest. Tell me more, Fulton. He said, well, as you know, an Englishman has invented what he calls a steam engine. Basically, you light a coal of wood fire inside of a furnace to heat a boiler of water. Then the fire gets very hot. The water is also heated and steam or water vapor comes off it. That steam is fed to an engine and provides energy to power the engine. Yes, I've heard of a steam and of this steam engine, Livingston replied. Please continue. Oh, I'm sure you have also heard of steam boats. Wait, what do you think a steam boat is? So yeah, it's a boat like this one that moves with steam. Actually, I have, said Livingston. Full and continued. Well, Livingston, I plan on building one, but my steamboat? will be much better than the ones already made. I shall use steam power to turn paddles on the back of the boat. With steam turning the paddles, the boat will move more quickly than by human muscle or wind in, in a sail. Extraordinary, said Livingston. 
That is not all, Fulton continued. My boat will be flat on the bottom, not curved. This will allow us to carry more people and products on each voyage. A voyage is a long trip. Picture a whole fleet of such boats, Livingston. Why, the owners would become rich, richer than you could ever imagine. Livingston noticed that Fulton had used the word us, as if he were already sure that Livingston would join him in his project. Livingston didn't mind. He agreed to help fund or give money for the plan, and the two friends became partners. Livingston knew that Fulton was not the only inventor working to design a steamboat, but the two men thought Fulton's design was far better than any others. So an inventor is someone who creates or um, invents or creates something. And so for him to create something, he needs this guy Livingston to help give him money to help create it. After many years of countless improvements to the boat's design, the day for the steamboat's first voyage or travel had finally arrived. Now, standing on deck, Livingston said, Those were our last guests coming aboard, Fulton. We can begin our journey whenever you are ready. I didn't think Mr. Fulton's feeling about this first trip. He's finally going to show off his steamboat. Probably pretty nervous. Fulton turned to his boat captain and who told him, the engine's all fired up, sir. I'm waiting your orders. Then let us begin, Fulton answered. The captain called to several sailors. Cast off the bow and stern lines. The sailors untied the thick ropes holding the boat to the dock. Then the captain turned to the pilot, whose job it was to steer the boat, and told him, Take us to Albany. So Albany was another city in New York. As the guests on board and the spectators on the dock began to cheer, steam began to pour out of the smokestacks, which are right here. The steamboat was on its way. So again, it's traveling here from New York, going all the way to Albany, up the Hudson River here. The plan was to travel along the wide Hudson River from New York City to the state capital of Albany, stopping briefly at Livingston's home in Claremont, New York which explains the name for Fulton's steamboat, North River Steamboat of Claremont. How does this picture of this map help you uh, understand the story a little bit better? Not only did the steamboat make, have to make the trip safely in order to show that steam travel worked, the boat also had to move faster than other types of boats, or no one would see any reason to switch to steam. How are other boats powered? Well, again, yeah, there's good news that were powered by a paddle, uh, someone paddling, and there were sailboats who were powered by the wind. So this boat has to travel faster than those to say, yep, this is better. As the viewers on the dock watched the steamboat paddle away, some people said, I don't see how they will ever do it. Others said, let's wait and see. After all, this fellow Fulton convinced Robert Livingston, a man who controls much of the river travel in New York, that his plan would work. Do you think this steamboat's voyage is going to work? The believers were right. About two days later, a second crowd stood cheering on the dock in Albany. As Fulton's steamboat puffed into view, the steamboat had taken less than two days for a voyage that usually took sailing ships four days. So it took half the time. So did it work? Was he successful? Was it faster? Congratulations, Mr. Fulton, said the lady in pink. Many didn't believe it could be done. You proved them wrong. Shaking Mr. Fulton's hand, Livingston said, Congratulations, Fulton. New York will never be the same. No, Livingston, replied Fulton. The world will never be the same. Robert Fulton was right. Over the next few years, the two partners set a whole fleet of steamboats on the Hudson River, right over here, and they set out a fleet or a bunch of boats to the Mississippi River over here. 
people realized that the steamboats were faster and much cheaper and much more reliable than any other types of transportation. There was only one problem. Steamboats needed rivers to travel on, and there were no rivers between the biggest cities. So people still couldn't use the steamboat to go everywhere they wanted. So what was the main topic of this read aloud? Yeah, this read aloud was mostly about Robert Fulton inventing the steamboat. Again, as we go through our um, timeline here, the steamboat was invented just after the Louisiana Purchase. So just after we, people decided, yes, we want to head out west, he was starting to make ways to travel faster on rivers, which probably helped play a big hand in people traveling out west as well. Okay, our word work word is the word voyage. I'll say the word, you repeat it after me, voyage. How many syllables is the word voyage? Should be two. What about, what sound does the vowel O-Y make? What about G? What does G say if it's followed by an E? So voyage, um, what do you think it means? So voyage is a long journey or a long trip. He started his voyage around the world in his sailboat. Tell me about a voyage that you would like to take one day. Well, I know I would like to take a voyage to Egypt to see the pyramids. I think that would be such a cool voyage to take. And there's going to be two places. Make sure you use the word voyage when you answer the question. If you could take a voyage anywhere in the world, where would you go? What kind of transportation would you use for your voyage? So if I was taking a voyage to uh, Egypt, I would have to take a plane. Would you rather take a voyage in a covered wagon or a steamboat? I think it would be fun to do a covered wagon because you'd be with a bunch of other people as well. What kinds of things would, should you take with you when you go on a voyage? For sure, do not forget a toothbrush and socks. There's one voyage I took where I forgot my socks and my feet were stinky. Who would you take with you when you are going on a voyage? Again, this was our second read aloud, learning about the steamboat um, in the westward expansion. Later on, we're going to be learning about some ways that um, there was that problem at the end of this, our read aloud there where it said, well, they couldn't travel everywhere in between major cities. We're going to have one read aloud here coming up where they tried solving some of that problems as well. Stay tuned.